Hey, what is up everybody? I'm Brian Marr and this is another Fake Nerds Discussion. I'm joined by Ben. Ben, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm uh, here on camera and I just knocked my camera off. Yeah. You know. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Do you want to start over? Huh? No, no that's, that's, right. that's, that's like... Uh, we're doing it live. That's, that's like... Uh, we're doing, <laughs> fuck it, we're doing it live. <laughs> that's quirky, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. No, it's endearing <laughs> for sure. Yeah. So... Today we're going to give people some reason to like me. (laughs) So uh, we're actually not talking about Big Brother or Westworld. Uh, Probably a surprise to a lot of you. Today we're actually talking about esports and whether or not you think they will ever be considered in the same breath as like traditional sports such as football, baseball, hockey, basketball, and I mean soccer to the rest of the world. Hey, the World Cup's going on right now, Brian, and there's a lot of people who are really excited about that. I would be more excited if the United States could get their shit together and qualify. <laughs> okay, the U.S. women's team just won the World Cup a few years back. So Yeah, but they're so but, good that it's just, like, expected, you know? Yeah. It's like uh, when the um, Golden State Warriors win the NBA championship. You're just like, yeah, obviously. Every single year. Yeah, it's like they're <laughs> supposed to win. They're the Golden State Warriors. It's like the women's soccer team is what America like wants to portray themselves as, you know? And it's like, yeah, we're awesome, obviously, all the time. Mm-hmm. And we win everything. But yep. the men's soccer team is what the United States has actually seen us. <laughs> <laughs> to the rest of the world. That's a great analogy. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, so I guess I just wanted to kind of talk about it. we're in the midst of the Overwatch League about to start their playoffs. They just finished their regular season. We covered it in the latest Fake Nerds update that uh, the Shanghai Dragons went 0-40. Not a good look. No, it's not a great look. Uh, they... Uh... Look, I, there's a lot of reason to pile onto the dragons, and I have piled onto the dragons <laughs> a lot. Right, but right. they do have they do have a few good players, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, of Dia, and I think that he's like re- his like talents are really wasted on that team. Honestly, uh, he's uh, he's like carried them uh, through a lot of matches mm-hmm. to the point where like there were matches they shouldn't have been in at all, and then they were in the matches because of him. Mm. Um, yeah, Gaguri is great, too. There's, a, there's a, a handful of good players on the team, but they just have no cohesion at all. <laughs> so I, earlier today when we were talking in the group chat, I was like, they should probably just fire everybody and start over. It can't get worse, but you're saying there is something to build on. Yeah, no, there definitely is. I think that they... I know we were talking earlier about whether the coaching is the problem, that coaching might be the issue. I think the biggest issue is probably just, like, team unity and communication. Mm. It looks like that a lot of their decision-making is not coming from a place that, like, makes a lot of sense. Right. (laughs) That's kind of harsh, but... (laughs) You guys don't don't really understand what you're doing, do you? they, They individually know what they're doing, and they, like... There'll be like moments where like an individual player will shine for like a map, uh, or for like you know uh, a point on a map or something. But they just there's just no consistent cohesion where like everyone is like playing as like a a well-oiled machine. Right. I think. Um, I think, and I'm gonna throw this down. It's a gauntlet. Uh, Overwatch League can take us up on it. I guarantee, if you guys let us make our own team. We will also lose all of our games. <laughs> it's a guarantee. It's a promise. <laughs> well, what would the uh, what would the the uh, city be? Because we're from Boston. We're the wi- we're the Worcester. <laughs> uh, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna collab Worcester. Yeah. We're the Worcester TV heads. Okay. I guess I, we could do like um, Hartford or. Um, yeah. True. Providence. Else? Providence. Yeah. Yeah. One of the minor cities around Boston. Yeah. <laughs> we cannot do worse than the Dragons. So. That's, it's like uh, when the Browns lost all their games last year and people were talking about their coach, Hugh Jackson, and it's like, you know what? I can uh, I can do as good a job as Hugh Jackson at coaching this team. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, similar results. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, so that aside, I think it's been a very successful first year for the Overwatch League overall. Um, ben, would you agree with that statement? Yeah, no, they definitely exceeded the expectations that I had coming in. Uh, I think that there's a lot of things uh, as far as longevity goes that they still have to like deal with to make sure that the league is going to continue for several seasons to come and essentially like as, until the game goes out of uh, out of you know being hype or whatever. Right, right. I, but, although it's been like two years and I don't think Overwatch shows many signs of slowing down in terms of popularity, which is impressive. Yeah, but I think that the thing is there hasn't really been a big competitive game that has come out since then. Like Fortnite's probably the closest and Fortnite's still in its infancy. So mm-hmm. Yeah, Fortnite needs to figure out like how they're going to do their battle royale like as an esport. Right. It's obvious that they're going to do it, but it's just gonna be I guess you can do squads in that game. So I guess that would be how yeah, that's how PUBG does it. So they have like uh, the squads. That I think they probably just do it pretty similarly. So, mm-hmm. and I think if any game has the chance to reach levels of Overwatch, it is Fortnite. Obviously, it's the most popular game in the world right now. But uh, I don't know one if people will necessarily be into that type of game like battle royale the way they have been the last like two years. Because it wasn't a huge genre, and then it came out of nowhere. And I just don't know if there's, like, the longevity there. But, yeah, so in the month of May, I was looking up. It's hard to find, like, comparable stats, really, um, to actual, like, ratings on TV. So I guess we'll go with this. Uh, in the month of May, there were 13.2 million hours of the Overwatch League watched on Twitch, which... I would say is a lot. Yeah, no, it's certainly a lot. I mean, if we're going to talk about viewership numbers, like, you could look at pretty much every major, uh, like, esports uh, title or esports event, like the International and, like, the, mm-hmm. the League Championship Series and stuff like that in the past, and their numbers exceed pretty much every major sporting event except for the Super Bowl and the World Cup. Mm-hmm. So... Like, they're bigger than the NBA Finals, the NHL Finals, the World Series. So so do you think it um, possibly <clears throat> is, like, our generation very into video games? That's not a bold statement, I don't think. Do you think just as we're, like, growing older and kind of pushing the old guard out that esports will be given more of a chance to shine on more traditional mediums such as television? Yeah, I mean, I think you can start to see that uh, happening now. I mean, ESPN has an esports division now. They broadcast uh, here. Well, they had a like a broadcast deal with Blizzard to broadcast Heroes of the Dorm, which is like a collegiate it's Heroes of the Storm. Storm. It's, it's yeah, awesome. <laughs> but like, and like Heroes of the Dorm is like a collegiate tournament for like a smaller esport. Like Heroes mm-hmm. of the Storm is like probably not even a top five esport right now is in terms of like viewership numbers and uh, most metrics so Mm -hmm. um there's definitely a push in that direction um there's people in the sports industry like uh, rick fox who owns echo fox pushing Mm -hmm. esports within the uh the traditional sports world you can even look to the overwatch league where like a ton of the teams are owned by the same enterprises as the professional sports are like the right. uprising is owned by the craft organization who mm-hmm. is the patriots <laughs> yeah which uh you know that just means that uh, we're gonna be really great as always at everything yeah. always be competitive right uh, actually if they did win that would be so hilarious this year because i feel like the rest of the country is probably so tired of boston sports at this point because they're always at least in the conversation of championships. Right. So just like, I wonder if they're like, oh, esports, at least I can get away from Boston this time. And it's like, nope, nope, we're here too. Fuck you guys. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're number three going into the league playoffs. I mean, obviously the XL is like by far the, uh, the favorites to take it. But we also just beat the XL uh, a couple weeks back, so... So it's all lining up. Yeah. Uh, oh, gonna be real obnoxious if they're in the championship. 
Elf for sure, yeah. That's like the the Boston New York sports rivalry even carrying over to esports. I love it. It's very that's but that's the kind of stuff that you need to bring legitimacy to the sports. You need passionate fans and this could be right. another step in that direction. Like you said, I think the biggest thing that esports has going against it is just these cycles of video games. Call of Duty comes out every year with a new game. Overwatch, it's going on two years, but we don't know like how long that's going to last. Whereas sports in general, like baseball, basketball, football, the rules, while they may change year to year, it's not like big game-changing things like it's generally the same game year in year out right yeah i think that's one of the main issues with trying to build uh, an esports league or an esports uh broadcast or anything like that the same way that you would approach it as a traditional sport mm. because there are so many differences there there are obviously similarities it's a competitive uh entertainment uh environment but there are differences in how the the cycles work and there's also uh, difference in how the relationships between players and teams and the uh, league administration and the game uh, owners work the game um, like because it the overwatch league and blizzard are two separate entities mm -hmm. but so like blizzard owns overwatch but then the overwatch league runs the competitive scene mm -hmm. of their league right. so it's very different from say the the nfl where the NFL, for all intents and purposes, owns the game of football mm -hmm. within America. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're definitely, like, upstart leagues, but no right. one cares. Yeah, like the X <laughs> XFL. <laughs> oh, well, actually, yeah, hold the phone. <laughs> Vince McMahon, that's Vince McMahon's music, is <laughs> coming in. Uh, yeah, so we'll see how that goes. But, yeah, you're definitely right. It's, it's kind of strange, but... We'll see. We'll see. I don't necessarily suspect that there's going to be an Overwatch 2 anytime soon, but we'll see how long the interest in this, it, it goes. But I definitely want to see one day, you know, uh, college like teams. I want to see skins for various colleges. I think that'd be cool to have like an actual league that feeds into the pros. No, for sure. I think that's definitely the next step. That's another big difference with the uh, traditional sports versus esports right now. Mm -hmm. Is there really isn't that much of a support for uh, like high school and college uh, esports leagues? Mm -hmm. And I think that's slowly changing right now, and it's not changing at the pace that it would need to be to keep up with the way the industry is going. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of colleges, like bigger colleges, definitely do have esports departments but they don't get the same support or funding that like, you know, the basketball or football department would. Yeah, and I think maybe the first step for them, they could like build a presence on Twitch, fund themselves that way. You know, there's a lot of potential ways to go about it for that to get funding in the video game, you know, industry. As you know, we're trying to do uh, here talking yep. about esports, trying to build a fan base. I, if we had mm -hmm. some sick talent at Overwatch, maybe it'd be a little easier. I, you know, I I played competitive Hearthstone sort of like you know for like right, a year yeah. and a half. <laughs> so Ben at least has the level of competition there. I yeah. uh, I don't I don't have anything like that. Uh, you know, I'm okay, uh, like third or fourth best person on the team of uh, Call of Duty. <laughs> Solid like one KD. I'm hey, not you know helping what? that much, but I'm not hurting. <laughs> you're you're like uh, you're like old old reliable, right? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> but yeah, do you have anything that you want to touch on before we wrap this up? Um, no, I think that to to answer like the broad question of is esports going to be as big as traditional sports at a certain point, I think the answer is like unequivocally yes. All I right. think it's going to surpass traditional sports probably within the next 20 years. Um, I think the numbers show that traditional sports are kind of uh, stagnating at this point in terms of their, uh, their ceiling of where they can go mm -hmm. uh, as far as viewership, as far as fan interaction, as far as monetization goes. And esports are like I think doubling every three years or something like that. It's mm. crazy. 
Yeah, no, that's a really good point. Obviously, the NFL saw a decline. I think every major league has seen a decline in the last few years. And the video game industry has a leg up because I think inherently the video game industry and gamers as a whole understand the internet. Whereas the people running these other leagues maybe don't understand it. I'll give it, I, I know MLB TV has like a really impressive online service. So I'll give that to them. But definitely the other leagues don't quite understand the streaming aspect and how important the internet could be for them. Well, I, I think the NFL has taken a few good steps uh, mm-hmm. in that direction recently. They've been like broadcasting games on Twitter, which is crazy. They've been broadcasting <laughs> yeah, games on crazy. Amazon. Like, I literally watched an NFL game on Twitter on my phone as I was walking home from work one day. Yeah, last that year. is crazy. So, so maybe maybe I'm wrong in that assessment, but I'd love for like a like I would love to be able to pay the NFL some amount of money a year to watch the Dolphins games right. online, yeah. you know? But as, a, as someone who lives in Massachusetts, I can't get the Dolphins game except for, like, twice a week and if they ever play on primetime. Um, so it would be nice to just pay, like, a reasonable sum for just their pass, and then maybe you can do tiers, like pay for various teams or pay, like, the whole Sunday ticket price like they do for every game depending on where you're at as a fan. Yeah, this is something else that uh, we didn't really touch upon is like broadcasting rights because mm-hmm. I know you mentioned MLB TV, but I had MLB TV for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. And in order to watch like Red Sox games living in Boston on MLB TV, you have to use a VPN because yeah, sucks. they block like local broadcast games mm-hmm. on the uh, MLB TV, even if you're paying for the subscription, which is like right. 30 something dollars a absurd. season. That's absurd. At least so, VPNs aren't horrible, but it's just another thing. Right. Yeah. It's like, just it's just a hassle, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and that's in in 2018, like the uh, a television station that is like very difficult to get without like a full on cable bundle. Like, I can't just add that to my cable subscription without adding like basically everything else. Right. So. Yeah. Like, and, it's, it's it's not like it's on ESPN. It's on Nesson, right? Right. <laughs> and uh, liter- you know what else you can watch on Nesson other than the Red Sox? Uh, like talk shows. Uh, nothing. <laughs> There's it's nothing. Fucking <laughs> no, it's, it's literally like radio yeah. shows, which Everything are free else on, on, on the AM terrible. radio. Right. Yeah, yeah. They have like Felger and Maz. Yeah. Like, just not even like a good professional setup. It's just like a webcam in Felger and Maz's studio. But like even if you wanted to listen to that, you can listen to it for free on the radio. Right. You just get the visual if you watch it on Nesson, which is just two guys fucking sitting in a studio. Mm-hmm. It's not like anything. Yeah, and who would watch that? Yeah, I know. <laughs> two guys just sitting around with cameras on them just blabbering on about sports and stuff. No, it's weird. It's weird. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's definitely, you know, Twitch, if you have an internet connection, Twitch is free. Right. So you, if you don't have anything to do and you want like some entertainment you can just go watch the overwatch league it's free with your internet subscription yeah and they monetize in like a a productive way that makes sense within the current uh like uh culture of the internet which is it's like it's very opt-in it's very uh like you pay for upgrades you pay for like uh like premium services you pay for uh, like loot, you pay for like it's it's like the uh, the the MOBA monetization um, for video, right? Because right. like for the MOBAs, like you like League of Legends is free, but then you pay for hero or you pay for champions, you pay for skins, you pay for uh, like emotes, you pay for all kinds of crap that just like add on, so you can like tell your friends how cool and rich you are, right? So, oh man, well. There you have it, folks. We think that esports will take over. Ben is going to go on vacation, so we won't be able to preview the Big Brother cast. But you know it. When he gets back, we're going to be talking a lot of Big Brother. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm so excited uh, for that. I'm excited to talk about Westworld when you get back. Um, even if we can't have you for the finale recap, I definitely want to get on the mic. Just break down the season as a whole. 
So that's some stuff you guys can look forward to. Other than that, make sure you check out our streams, our fake nerds updates, and everything else we have on the channel. Thank you so much for watching.